Hello everyone, this is Jozef Not here, and in this video I am going to talk about multiphase modeling. But I am going to use the volume of fluid method for that. Here you see finished result, where you see the liquid uh, phase fraction, and by the end of this tutorial I want you to understand this result, what this means. The goals of this tutorial are the following. I want you to understand multiphase modeling, especially the volume of fluid method. We're going to use a gas phase and a liquid phase, and I want you to understand how the volume of fluid method handles these two phases. I'm going to show you the case setup, the initial values and the boundary conditions. I'm going to run two simulations of the dam break case, which is a two-dimensional case on a coarse grid and a refined grid. The geometry looks like this. We will have more or less a tank with a wall on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side and the bottom with an obstacle in the center. We'll have the atmosphere here in the top, so we won't have a wall here. And on the left-hand side here, we will have a magical water column that is being held by a magical membrane that disappears at the time zero and then the gravitational force is pulling this water column down in the direction of our lower wall. For that we will use the Interfoam solver. The official description is that it is a solver for two incompressible isothermal immiscible fluids using a volume of fluid phase fraction based interface capturing approach. So there's a lot of information there. Let's just list the, those up. So the solver is incompressible. It is a transient solver. You can use this solver for both laminar and turbulent flows. It is a multi-phase solver. And one important point is that the two phases are immiscible. For that we will use the volume of fluid method and the solver is isothermal. Now, as for the equations that are being solved, the continuity equation reduces to the simple equation because we are assuming an incompressible flow, the divergence of the velocity field is zero. In the momentum equations we could divide by the constant density and end up with the density in the pressure gradient term, but we're, this is not being done in this solver, rather the constant density is remaining in the partial time derivative in the convection and the diffusion term. And in the diffusion term we are using the dynamic viscosity which is given by the density and the kinematic viscosity. And this p-value, the pressure, is now really the pressure in Pascal. Transient means that we have a partial time derivative in the equations. And again we can solve the equations for the laminar flow or we, could in we can include additional terms for turbulence modeling. For that go check my tutorials on turbulence modeling. And in this F we have two additional terms, one being the surface tension and the second one is the gravitational term. Now for multiphase modeling we are using the volume of fluid method. There we assume a mean density that we will use in the equations and we calculate this mean density out of the density of the liquid and the density of the gas. And for that we are using a scalar field, alpha, and this alpha gives if we have liquid or gas in a given cell. If alpha is 1, then we know that in this cell we have only liquid, and if alpha is 0, then we know that we, in this cell we only have gas. Now the point is then in, that in reality we have a sharp interface between a liquid and the gas. If you think of water in a glass, then you, you can see that on the top we have a sharp interface, a discontinuous jump between liquid and gas. And this is the point of this immiscible point, that we have to maintain a discontinuous jump between alpha of 0 and alpha of 1. And in order to describe the movement of our fluid, we have a transport equation for alpha. If you ignore this term here, then you can see that we have a pure convection of alpha. I hope that you know by now 
what convection means. And if we have an alpha value of zero or an alpha value of one, then this term becomes zero. And then we really have a pure convection of alpha. But if alpha is 0 0.5, for example, then this term is non-zero. And if you remember back to the tutorial on discretization schemes and transport equation, we will always have a certain numerical diffusion. And this is the issue with the volume of fluid method that we introduce alpha values of, for example, 0 0.5, something between 0 and 1. But we want to avoid that because we want to have a sharp interface between gas and liquid. And this term is doing that. If we have an alpha between 0 and 1, then this term is non-zero and this term is compressing the interface. Okay. Then again, the solver is isothermal, so we do not solve an energy equation. And the continuity equation and the momentum equations are not solved separately, but are rather combined into the piezo loop. Okay, at this point I want to stop talking about the theory and jump into the simulations. I'm not going to show you the source code. If you're interested in the source code, go and check it out yourself. You can find it in Application Solvers Multiphase Interform. I will just go into the tutorial folder of Interform. And here you see we have three folders, the laminar folder, LAS folder and RIS folder. As I mentioned, we can use this solver for both laminar cases and turbulent cases. I will go into the laminar folder and here you see two folders and I'm going to take a look at the dam break case. Now I'm going to set up the base case for the dam break case. For that I'm going to copy the dam break case that comes with open foam and create a base case. And I'm going to change a couple of things in the base case. First, I'm going to take a look at the grid. So I open up the block mesh dict. Here you see that we have a couple of vertices and we have five blocks. If I go back to the geometry, to the schematic sketch of the geometry here, then we, I show you the five blocks. We have a block here, then another block here, then another block in the center, another block here, and the last block here. This is why we need five blocks in this geometry. Then we have a couple of boundaries, a left wall, which is nothing more than the wall on the left hand side. Then we have a right wall, which is nothing else than the wall here on the right hand side. We have a lower wall, which is the wall here in the bottom, including the obstacle. And we have atmosphere, which is this red line here where we have the atmosphere actually. And block mesh will collect all the faces that we did not specify here and put them into the empty boundaries because we are solving a two-dimensional simulation. Oops. No, don't save, please. And I'm going to execute block mesh before I forget it. And I'm going to enter zero folder, folder here. We have three quantities alpha, p and u. In the single phase solvers we had p and u, the pressure and the velocity. Now we also have an alpha, which is the alpha that I was talking about here, this scalar field that gives us if we have liquid or gas in a given cell. I will start with the velocity. Here we initialize the velocity to be 0, 0, 0 in the entire volume and I'm fixing the velocity to 0, 0, 0 on the walls, which is the no slip boundary condition. And on the atmosphere, there is this pressure inlet outlet velocity, but I do not want to talk about the pressure inlet outlet velocity. You can use this if you want, but I'm going to use just zero gradient on the outlet because you are familiar with this uh, boundary condition. 
but again you can use the pressure in that outlet. I save this. Now as for P, R, G, H, this is the pressure, as you see here, not including the gravitational term. We will also have in the results uh, quantity P, which will be the pressure including the gravitational term. Okay, here you see fixed flux pressure. You can use this boundary condition, but I do not want to explain this. So I'm just going to use zero gradient here. Because I hope that you are familiar with this boundary condition by now. Okay, and I'm setting this to be zero gradient. And this also. Then here, in the top, here I'm fixing the pressure to be zero, so atmospheric pressure. And again, I do not want to talk about the total pressure boundary condition, so I'm just using fixed value here. But you can use the total pressure boundary condition if you wish. Okay, and again, we have this empty boundary condition, which gives us the direction in which the, equ the equations should not be solved. So now let's come to alpha. Alpha is dimensionless because it just tells us if we have liquid or gas in the cell. So it has to be dimensionless and we initialize alpha to be zero in the entire domain. So at this point we only have gas in the entire domain. And we will use set fields to set up this water column here. Okay, so we use zero gradient on the walls and on the atmosphere. I'm not going to use inlet outlet because I do not want to talk about this boundary condition at this point. So I'm just going to use zero gradient also on the atmosphere. Very good. So now this dot org means that this is the backup file. So I just have to create the actual initial value for alpha, alpha dot water. So I'm just copying this file alpha water now i have alpha water the actual initial condition and the backup file very good now i want to enter constant here we have a dynam dynamic mesh ticked where we could set a dynamic mesh but we are not doing that we are using a static mesh so i'm not changing that in g we can define the direction of the gravitational acceleration and also the, the amount 9.81 and it is going in the negative y direction so the y direction is going up and the gravitational force is going in the direction of our lower wall and we'll pull this water column in the direction of our lower wall so i'm not changing this in turbulence properties we use laminar models and in transport properties, we are setting the viscosity and the density of our liquid and the gas phase. Here we set the name of our phases. So we define our first phase to be water and the second phase to be air. And this is important because the first entry is the one which is represented by alpha. And the second one is the one represented by one minus alpha. Plus this first entry water has to be also used in zero. So it has to be alpha dot water. If you are using, if you want to do a simulation with oil and air, for example, then you specify here oil and air. And then in zero, you have to call your initial file not alpha dot water, but rather alpha dot oil. This is important. Otherwise you'll get an error message. And again, here we have entries for water. So the, the viscosity, the kinematic viscosity and the density of water, we define it here and we set the kinematic viscosity to be 10 to the power of minus six and the density to be 1000, which is a good rough estimation for water. And here we set the values for air. We are using a kinematic viscosity of 
1.48 times 10 to the power of minus 5 for air and a density of 1, which is also a good rough estimation for air. And we are not using these viscosity models here. And here in the bottom we have an entry called sigma, which is the surface tension between our liquid and the gas. And in this case, this is the value for the surface tension between water and air. Good, now let's go into the system folder. I'm not going to decompose the case, so I'm just using these four dictionaries here in control dict. Here I could change this to latest time, but I'm just going to leave start time. I'm putting, I'm using the end time of one, so I'm running the simulation until one second. I'm using a delta t, an initial delta t of one millisecond, and I'm using adjustable runtime, and I'm going to use, uh, save after 50 millisecond, then 100, 150, and so on until one second. And I'm using a maximum Kuro number of one. I'm just leaving this. This works for this tutorial case. Now in FV schemes, we're using for DDT schemes Euler. And important is are these entries for the divergence terms in the in the transport equations for rho phi u, which is this term, the convection term in the Navier Stokes equations. Here we are using linear upwind. You are, I hope that you are familiar with the linear upwind scheme. And this term, the phi alpha term, which is this term here, the divergence term in the pure convection equation of alpha. Here in the Dambeck case that comes with the open foam, the fun layer discretization is being specified, but you can use this if you want, but since you're not familiar with this and I do not want to talk about that, I'm just using the linear upwind scheme for this divergence term. And I'm using grad u because we are just using default values for the gradi gradient schemes. And this phi rb is this term, the discretization of the second term, which is responsible for the compression of our interface and I'm not using the linear scheme but there is this interface compression scheme and I will not talk about this but it is a good idea to use this specific this specific scheme for for this second divergence term here so I just save this and in FV solution I want to solve this equation once and I'm leaving everything else as it is defined in the Dambrake case that comes with open form and here you see n outer correctors, n correctors and n non-orthogonal correctors. I talked about these iterations and inner loop and outer loop in previous tutorials I will not talk about them. You have three loops within interform if you're interested in these settings, go and check out the source code where you will find these loops. I'm just going to use these standard settings. Yes, please save. And then we come to the set fields dictionary. We set alpha water to be zero as a default as the default values. So at first we set alpha to be zero in the entire domain. So we only have gas. This was also the case in zero alpha. But then now we are using a box that is going from zero to 0 0.1461 in the, the x direction. So from here till here. And then the box is going from zero to 0 0.292 in the y direction. So from here to here. And we are uh, and in the empty direction we are using minus one to plus one, and within this box we set the alpha values to be one. So now, after I execute set fields, we will have water within this box and air outside of this box. Okay, and again, if you're doing a simulation with oil, for example, and you specify the names of the phases to be oil 
and air then here you also have to say that you want to set the values for alpha dot oil rather than alpha dot water okay so i created the block mesh so i can now execute set fields and now we have a list of entries for alpha okay now i'm going to create the dummy file for paraview and i want to show you the case the boundaries and the grid in paraview and also the initial conditions especially the alpha initial condition apply so this is what the geometry looks like actually this is the mesh it is rather coarse but i will refine that in the second case and now let's take a look at u we specified it to be 0 0 0 at t of 0 and p r g h is also 0 everywhere and alpha we set with the set fields with set fields to be 1 within the box that we defined and alpha is 0 everywhere else so here in these cells we are using a density of 1000 and outside we are using a density of 1 and so there is a huge jump between these cells here a jump from 1 to 1000 and this is the issue here with multi-phase simulations and then due to gravitation we will have a movement of our liquid and we have to maintain this discontinuous jump in reality with our grid and we have to take care of that in order to describe the movement correctly okay so now i exit paraview and i'm going to make copies of the base case course this and then fine no fine yes fine now we have it fine very good now so we have two cases now i could start with the simulations but at this point i would like to stop recording i hope that you enjoyed the first part of the tutorial and that you learned something I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the second part of the tutorial.